Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the weekend update. Pretty interesting week, to say the least. Uh, of course, the large caps continue to run rampant uh, because COVID's cured. Uh, there's no one unemployed, et cetera, et cetera. You know the drill, but this is the typical summer doldrums that we see normally happen this time of the year, every year, mid-August till Labor Day tends to sometimes see a melt up in the mega caps on lower volume and volume just disappear from mostly of the market now unfortunately this year we had a bunch of earnings come out this week any other week everyone would have yawned but there was a mild panic out there in small cap land this week and that just made things a little worse but this is the dow 15 minute chart now you can see here we were in this bearish rising wedge up here and then we went into a sideways pattern. Didn't break down and looks ready to break up now. There's news out this morning with the NBA and Yale University who have developed a saliva test that is probably going to be used to pump up the large cap stocks tomorrow. Uh, the NFL is already cheering this rapid saliva test. Uh, going to probably use it to run things up tomorrow but if we look over here this is the dow daily chart and you can see we've just gone vertical here but what i want you to look at you see this move we've seen here in the dow over the last two weeks this is who's responsible apple look at this move apple is up 109 dollars in the last couple of weeks 30 percent move in apple because they are going to be doing a reverse split now the dow jones is price weighted so they may use this to prop the market up until month end when apple actually does that split and its influence on the market diminishes so let's see what happens on that front but again the news out there on that saliva test is actually pretty good this is a quick look at the qqq large cap tech very did very very well this last week look at tesla tesla's on a crazy move as well on its reverse split but this saliva test news is going to be pretty good news for the gambling sector with that in mind DraftKings got slammed on friday because the irs came out and put an excise tax that's going to cost them about eight million dollars i we want to watch these stocks um tomorrow the could see a nice little breakout especially on that positive news I, i'm in the camp that we are absolutely going to have the nfl this fall no matter what news is out there nfl is going to play that's just my opinion so the stocks that are going to benefit from that are DraftKings here hofv i mean looking here at the hof chart you see right here, MACD, negative, negative MACD while it was in this implosion. And since then, it's bounced all the way up. Nice cross, nice strength, but the stock has gone sideways. This is a sign to me that HOFV could be ready for a nice little move here in the near term, especially on that sports betting or NFL news coming. I'd be looking probably for a 450 break here for a move up to five plus in the coming week. Another big player on that, Gamble, GMBL. This is another one that's about to get a positive MACD cross. We've got Stochastics in the basement, and these are another another company that's going to probably do well with the return of sports. Now, they also do eSports. eSports is up 20%, they're saying, revenue-wise this year. Has not been reflected in this chart. It's holding above this 200-day moving average. So, again, this sector looks good for a move this week. One other play in it is SLGG. I actually liked the earnings report on this one. This is a TikTok play, but it's also an eSports play, and it's filled that gap all the way back down. And kind of like Hall of Fame, the MACD was in an extreme negative level as we saw all that selling, and it's about to go positive while the stock is still here on the bottom. This right here with the chart looking like this, an RSI under the, you know, under the 30 level, looks good for a solid bounce back this week. You'll probably see uh, scanner chasers come in around 250, you know, and eyeballs would be looking for a move up to 280 on this one. Quick mention on a large cap stock. This is a mega long-term play for me. Space had that big run up, did a very well-timed offering at 19 bucks. This one is one of my favorite mega long-term swing plays. I only mention it just because my other favorite long-term mega play was Tesla. That's doing very, very well recently. This is one that I like a lot and I'm accumulating in my long-term account. But let's jump into some small caps play. There was just utter panic out there. Now, on Friday, 
We had that sell-off on Wednesday because Sputnik cured cancer, or cancer, cured COVID. Of course, we saw a big sell-off on the leaders. They ended up bouncing back on Thursday and Friday, but part of the reason I had us raising cash on Thursday and then definitely raising cash on Friday because we had a lot of stocks this week with fantastic news, with great earnings reports, and they just got thrown out the window with everything else. People were running around going, what's going on, dumping stuff left and right, no matter the news. ARPO, excellent news. I'm calling this my baby Navex. This is the weekly chart of it. It's trying to break out here. If we actually look at the daily chart, nice, solid uptrend in place. What we're going to be looking for is a break over two. Now it's got rock solid support around the 150, 160 area. That would be a place that I would be looking to possibly add to my swing position. Friday, that kind of selling that we saw in a lot of stocks on Friday, normally I would have been buying those dips hand over fist. But one of those things, like I mentioned in the room, when you see a little bit of a trend change, sometimes it's best to just sit back and watch and see what develops you can always rebuy a stock a day later just see the action out there sometimes these sell-offs and these run for the hill kind of action we see out there can last a few days why jump in front of a moving train that's coming at you really really quickly step back look see what's happening and then you can look to adding your positions now one such play was vtgn i thought that was a great earnings report a great update we got the update on their on their earnings report regarding their trial for their anxiety drug for covid that's going to start in new york city it's been all over the news about mental health because of covid right now great play on this one I was actually going to pick this one up. I thought the report was so good and the angle was so great at 84 cents on Friday. But I, you know, I said, yeah, let me sit back. And lo and behold, they were selling this one a couple of hours later at 74. Now we've got pretty great support down here at the 200 day moving average on the, this is the one hour chart we're looking at. Uh, Stochastic's down at 30. RSI, you know, in the basement as well. So this is one I'd be looking at. It's one of my larger swings right now. I, I, did not do anything to this one. I'll be looking to add this one this week. I think the story is too good. DSS, this is another stock that had a exact same similar thing. Everyone ran for the hills. They were chasing this one at the start of the week at 10 and couldn't sell enough of it down here at 7. Now, if we look at the, this is the daily chart. Lo and behold, look, we're right back down at the bottom of the trading channel yet again. Every month, this stock goes from 7 to 10 to 6 to 7 to 10 to 7 to 10. So we're right back down here, except now the merger has been voted on. So any press that we have coming now should be good for the stock. Um, all that COVID PRs, you had to look for it. Didn't actually pop under up under DSS's symbol. That should be coming in the near term. Isaiah. I thought that was a fantastic earnings report. The strange thing that we saw happen this week, and a lot of it is to do with, there, there is mega manipulation in these stocks by these robotic trading programs. Isaiah is one of those ones. That report they had on earnings report on Thursday, I thought was excellent. There was so much juicy meat in that report and somehow it gapped down 20 cents. We picked up some shares. But I mean, it was a great report. I don't have to go over the details of it, but one of those things in that report, if we look over here, this is the one hour chart. In that report, they said that they raised cash at $1.94. What a fantastic price. I mean, they picked up $15 million by selling shares at a buck 94 over the last couple of weeks. Fantastic. Now, what we are seeing happening is there's an at the market ATM. So that's what that means is we're not going to actually see a press release saying they're offering stock at a certain price. The broker who is handling it just sells into the volume. They actually got a great deal for these guys. But what typically happens with these ATMs, they sold the shares for the company up here and this is them shorting it all the way down here they're not supposed to do it but there's a lot of things they're not supposed to do in this market and they do so we're right back down here again they're going to need to cover they're going to need to bounce it we've got TikTok webinar on tuesday so this stock should be pretty active here uh the next couple of days we're all the way right back down to the 50-day moving average and then i mean we've got rock solid support here in the 120s Chart looks great. 
everything has done this you know we've had stocks that have gone one two three hundred percent of course they're going to retrace back this is what a normal market does speaking of tiktok the other tiktok play is wimi w-i-m-i i just pulled this up this is the one hour chart this chart looks this is a solid uptrend in place here on the one hour all the indicators look really really good 850 would be the break here looking for 10 simple as that and it's got strong support at 780 ish going into this upcoming week admp now admp covid fda news on friday a week ago this stock would have been trading at two dollars on that news it was at 123 in pre-market they opened it at 114 we picked up some shares at 106 it bounced a little to 110 and that was it despite that big news that kind of action was why i had to sit on our hands on friday when you have stocks that have big news that would have doubled them previously and they're not moving in the market you sit back so right now we're right back down chart looks pretty good this downtrend line is strong it keeps rebuffing this stock every day someone does not want this stock to break this level but on the other side of that when it breaks this level it's going to be free stochastics are in the basement if we look at a daily chart here 50-day moving average is at 81 cents i'm not saying it's going to 81 cents but we've got very very strong support just under the price here in the 80s i would be looking to add to my position now there's you're going to see this set up on a lot of these charts this is just a get me out run for the hills and then the short trading programs coming in here and just shorting and pressuring the stock and on that note guys one of the things you got to remember is these computerized trading programs and shorts in general like to breed fear so if you're out there running around posting oh my god what am i gonna do i'm losing my ass that's going to prompt these guys to go hmm i can shake some shares out of these guys really really easy trade emotionless if you're feeling like you're overwhelmed in a position you reduce your position so you can sleep at night it's not that hard a thing that's actually the one thing that wipes most traders out i posted a nice little video it was an old one yesterday you can see it on the youtube channel about a webinar i did on trading uncertain markets now despite the fact that this market is at almost all-time highs again there is a little bit of uncertainty there in these small cap stocks remember the small cap stocks have been going balls to the wall for the last six months so a little bit of a pause in a period in the market when you typically see volumes dry up is normal don't be trying to make a lamborghini on every single trade don't be going all in stick to the trading rules that will made you the money here don't give it back in this kind of period one such stock jagex just running out the door in the last couple of days and everyone just panic 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 all the way back down to support again look at the macd macd extreme negative it actually broke the extreme negative that we saw back in march and then look what had happened same thing came all the way down here and then ran 50 to 75 percent over the next couple of weeks so a lot of panic out there a lot of fear sometimes you just step back and then wait for the right opportunity to add more and jump in you should not be averaging down every day when stocks are falling i know i see guys doing that on uh, dips have been our friend but dips are our friend when you see a big dip and then it bounces if you buy a dip and then it dips more you don't add more you got to wait for the bounce you don't buy a dip here buy a dip here buy a dip here you would buy a dip here and then you gotta wait till we actually get a bounce that's a mistake a lot of rookie traders make inuv another what i thought excellent earnings report um the crazy thing is disney and stocks like that whose business has been decimated are almost trading at their highs again with half their businesses shut down and then you have companies like inuv and isaiah who actually did extremely well despite everything being shut down but the market not giving them the same excuse that they're giving the mega caps silly 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 but we're right back down into this trading range that we've been in place since may when it comes down here it bounces comes down it bounces this is down 23 cents in a week there should be a solid bounce on this one near term if we look out here this is the one hour chart look at this just straight down now this is what we call opposite of the one we see in the qqq 
this is a bullish downward trend here so the break of this downtrend is about 54 cents and you'd be looking for a bounce up into the 60s rsi is in the basement stochastics in the basement it's just a matter of have we gotten all the weak guys out or all the weak hands or the ones who need to sell are they all out yet because once that sell pressure disappears these should see a nice bounce avco this is another covid19 drug nice range we need that to break simple as that great data great drug potential coming uh, another one that i really really like in the near term ogen here's the ogen one hour chart ogen Ogen actually sold off before the other ones. So Ogen has given up 50% of its gain. Ran from 50 cents to two bucks. 300% gain has now given up half of that move. Holding 50 day moving average very, very nicely. Watch this one for the upcoming week. Quick mention on fun. This is the fun one hour chart. Again, a week or so ago, these guys could do no wrong. 194. Friday, 132. Uh, yeah. Um, now, fun has a couple of big angles that I wanted to talk about. And this is the last stock we're going to go over here today. This is the daily chart here on fun. But all over the headlines now, you're seeing massive talk about voter suppression here for the upcoming election. This is going to be a nasty, nasty election. Uh, it's probably going to impact the market September, October. Um, fun does political stuff that voter outreach is going to be huge with all the voter suppression we're seeing out there bottom of this trading channel 125 to 30 i mean the 50-day moving average here is at 139 so i'm thinking we should see a solid bounce all these charts look the same extreme panic over the last few days and what drove this panic was the sputnik drug and a rotation out of the covid stocks like everything was cured but more along the lines it's them trying to jam the large cap stocks up before the apple split and that impact disappears distribution wave and if i go back here again red days volume is double the green days so up days half the volume we're seeing on selling days that's another warning sign but remember the fed is still out there propping this market up so i know the video went a little long today everything is okay guys trade to your comfort level always have at least 50 percent cash we should see a nice bounce in everything this week but you know going into this week my plan is half positions now Stocks that we sold on Friday were traders. I have no problem turning around and rebuying them on Monday. We are traders, or Tuesday for that matter. So be nimble, be liquid, and be ready for a nice week. Have a great rest of your weekend, and see you all in the chat room tomorrow. Bye.